Hi everyone, it's Gav here, LFC Day Trippers, and I'm in Liverpool, as you know. And today I'm joined by my good friend Alex from the Cop TV. Alex, how are you? Do you know what, Gav? It's always good to see you, mate. And yeah. There's always normally a bit of crack involved, a pint or two, yeah. or three or four. I've mixed it all in a bit today. Of golf as well yeah, today. Yeah, mixed so it in today, so can't really go wrong. I, I love brought it. you somewhere where we can have a chat for 15 minutes and then swing golf clubs and play badly on this lovely track man yeah. screen behind us. I've seen you, you look decent, mate. You look decent, <laughs> but no, it's I've only hit four or five practice shots. I should have brought my glove with me, I'm being honest. Yeah. But look, what I'm doing this weekend is I've spoken to a couple of, I suppose, Liverpool content creators that are based in Liverpool predominantly. You know, I know you're in London and stuff like that as well. And just to get just to get an idea of them as to when they're making this content, how advantageous it is that you're in Liverpool, you're close to things, you know. I was speaking to the Amphitheater Rap the other day and they were saying, it's so good, you know, if something happens, they're able to get together, sort it out, and they can be in Anfield in five minutes. Or yeah. uh, how big is it that you're in Liverpool doing this stuff? Yeah, I mean, I've been in Liverpool now since uh, July 2021, so just yeah. about 18 months. And um, before I came here, I mean, you can look at numbers and how it's grown since mm. I've moved to Liverpool as facts of yeah. why it's helped me. But before I moved here, the thought was all, and you know, like through my family and my, all my family still live here and I've been coming here my whole life, so it feels at home anyway. But when I came up here, it wasn't until then that I started really making relationships with people in the pubs, going to the game, other content creators, you know, being on the right ticket um, WhatsApp groups, being in this and that. And then you really feel like you're a part of it. And I think it's helped as well because of my story that my family are all from here anyway and I know my way around. But it's helped the channel massively and I don't think me, if I didn't move to Liverpool during lockdown, because it kind of still was lockdown yeah, yeah. and it was actually my girlfriend's idea. She had a dream one night and said she moved to Liverpool oh. and I was like, I think we should. Yeah. So I've got to thank her especially, but at the same time, the fact shows <coughs> since moving, the channel's got bigger and I feel like, you know, like you said, with the, um, the Anfield rap lads, the Red Men, I feel like You've got to tip your hats to those guys because, and here we go. That's there you the go. Stuff. Cheers. Cheers. You've got to tip your hats to, to those guys because they've done it first and they're very successful at it. But I feel like a different kind of opinion with the people that we get on the channel. Yeah. Sean, he's been on a lot of times. Yep. I've been on your channel a lot. I feel like it's it's kind of established in a way because I think most people know about the Cop TV now in yeah. Liverpool and it's massively helped me moving here as well. Yeah. 100%. Uh, you know, like you, you, like you mentioned the Anfield rap there, and I was I was talking to Josh, and I was saying to him that, you know, I remember being over here a couple of years ago on the Anfield rap, and they were using a studio, which they still do. But now when you go and in the, there, um, on the docks there, yeah. in the back building, or yeah, something. Avenue yeah. HQ, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a great office. It looks great from outside. It is. It's brilliant. But they had an office upstairs, and then they had the studio downstairs, and then when you go down to the studio, they have another studio off the side. Yeah. So even that sort of growth, you know. But in terms of the COP TV, you know, moving from London to Liverpool is a, is a huge thing. It's a huge thing in life, regardless of what yeah. their job is. You know, moving from one bro, yeah. city to another probably feels like moving from another different yeah. country. You know, that sort yeah. of like... It's basically like being in Ireland here, I feel like. Yeah, it is a bit, isn't it? But, you know, when it, when it comes down to it and you're, you're looking and you're looking to move to Liverpool, and what, what, what do, you, do you just feel more comfortable doing it here? There's more access here? There's... And I'm not saying access to the club, I'm just saying access to things like standing outside the lawyer buildings, doing a report if you want to, or outside Kirby or Anfield or, or wherever, one of the pubs, wherever it might be. You know, you used to be up here while still living in London doing the fan cams and stuff after the game, but how much easier is it to go, I'm doing a fan cam and I live 15 minutes away? Yeah. And, you know, with my situation with DR Sports, yeah. I have to be in London three weekends out of yeah. four. Sometimes it doesn't fall on that weekend that Liverpool are at home on a Saturday, so mm. I can, I won't feel as bad that I miss an away game because I need to be at every home game. Since we started the COP TV, and that goes for me, James and Jack, the cameraman, um, we've never missed a home game. Mm. And I think at the minute, we're maybe the most consistent in terms of the fan cam outside Anfield. Mm. I don't think really anyone else. I saw it last night, we put over 500 out in coming up to three years mm. on January the 4th, so it's almost 500 now. But... So when I'm in London doing DR stuff, I definitely feel FOMO for missing out yeah, and, yeah. and not being here. So when I am here, for instance, yesterday, that was my first Anfield three o'clock kickoff on a Saturday for months. Yeah. So I, I loved the day of that yesterday. Yeah. 
I love that kickoff. Huh? Oh, it's beautiful. I yeah. think it's the best because no, it means our work's finished at seven. Yeah, but, but not even that. I, I love a half five on a Saturday. Yeah, I, I don't like right. the Sunday ones because I'm usually going home that night. Yeah, and the well, early Saturdays, I'm, I'm okay. But the, the three o'clock Saturday, for the timing of coming over here, having time, like yeah. I come over on Fridays, so I have a bit of time. Spend the whole weekend. Yeah, you're not in a rush to the game no. on Saturday, and after the game, then on Saturday you still can relax. the whole night. Yeah, because I'm going, I'm going home tonight at nine o'clock. Yeah, I've loads of time. You'd be back at ten. Yeah, but in answer to your question. When we play like at eight o'clock Champions League night, and me and Jack, the cameraman, are in the van exporting the videos, um, <laughs> maybe thirty minutes after kickoff, after we've done the fan count, after full time, and then by the time we've driven from the ground to my house, it's about ten minutes. Mm. It's about three point one miles away from my flat in Chinatown to the ground. So, in answer to your question, how good is it being fifteen minutes away? Yeah. It's unreal because. Sometimes we do look up and see, right, who's put the first video out? Is it us or yeah. is it Anfield Rap beaten us? Because <coughs> yeah. it's healthy competition. Like, yeah. I've met all the lads yeah. from... We do that. We do, we do that. I know you've got a really good relationship with the Rap as well. <coughs> I, have, I have a good relationship with all of them. Um, you know, and in fairness, when you come over here and you ask any content creators, can they do something with you? Can they give you a bit of time? They're brilliant. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I've, I have yourself. I've had Dominic from the Royal M Pod. I've had Courtney Neary that makes the YouTube yeah, yeah, blogs, she's, daily she's, blogs. Yeah, she's. And I've had the Anfield rap, and there hasn't been one issue with any of it. It's like, yeah, I'll do it, no problem. Yeah, but you know, that's how you know how I work. Like we we've spoken in the past about how other people on YouTube have their way of doing things, and that's cool. But for me, and I actually had this conversation with uh, someone yesterday, and I said, from the age of fifteen to. 25 really i didn't really get paid for any of this yeah. it was just a love so when you actually meet people in this game we're all trying to do our thing and you actually go on with them and you're friends with yeah. them that to me is way more than some well, fake well, online but, but, YouTube but, but, but so if you ask me to do something yeah like, why would i you're my mate so but, but, but the way it is like I, I i never understand people saying like i'd never say no to anybody you know like if, if someone came out with a, with a youtube channel tomorrow that done exactly what i was doing Okay, and they came to me and said, well, I'm doing this, can you come on the show? I'd say, yeah, you know, because the way I look at it is, don't get me wrong, you can be, you can be unique in what you're doing and you can be, you can try to be different, you can be this, but at the end of the day, we're all talking about Liverpool Football Club, whatever way you want to throw it out there. Because we love it though. Yeah, yeah, but, but the That's thing the is, key. yeah, and the thing is like, I, and, and listen, it's shown this weekend by people just giving their time, no problem whatsoever. I think it's just, everyone benefits off it. Like, if, if I have you on my channel t today, which I do, right? I don't think that, oh, he's getting more exposure than me on my own channel. It makes no sense. You can't look at it like that. No. Yeah. And, and the thing is, you need to be able to turn around and go, yeah, we've put out a good video. People like watching it. Plus, some people might go and watch Alex now. We maybe know about you, but don't know about you, wherever it might be. And then they go and watch it. Like, comment, and subscribe. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never say that. I always forget. But, 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 but that's what I'm saying. It's, it's beneficial for everyone. And yes, it is. You know, we mightn't agree on certain things, we do agree on certain things, but at the end of the day, we're all putting content out there. We're all having a good time. Yeah. And yeah, there's people making money out of it, there's yeah. people making a career out of it. It's not my career. Yeah. You know, my career at the moment is mine and looking after my children, you know, simply because of work and these situations at home. Well, it's, well, I'd like to think I do a decent yeah. job, you know, they're, they're still alive. Um, <laughs> but, you know, but going on to that then, you know, you talk about DR Sports with Robbie Loyal and um, Robbie Loyal Sports from Arsenal Fan TV. Is that where the career really kicked in? Because you're saying that you're doing it, you're doing it for X amount of years, you're not really getting paid off. You know, when I see you on when I see your online online stuff, I know you're doing other things outside of this, and yeah, that's yeah, probably yeah. part of your career, as they call it. You know, the sort yeah. of way. But is that where it's really kicked off? Where it's it's focused you on this is this is it now? Do you know, it's a great question. Um, so basically, when I was kind of like I said, fifteen, I started doing written journalism. Yeah. In I did the Best of British Sports magazine, which was like a yearly thing. Um, and I see going Smith, see my name in the paper. So I kind of from uh, basically my how it all goes, it all stems back to my dad, right? He was a footballer, so that was always what I was going to be. I got to semi pro, I still play now. I played yeah. at Millwall. Yeah, yeah, seen with, it, yeah. Uh, got, got some stories about Mick McCarthy as well, but. <laughs> Um, so I was always going to do that. My dad and mum split up, whatever. Um, he got quite ill and then basically still played football most weeks, but he wasn't there to really mm. push me how I should have been yeah. pushed at the time from when you're getting looked at from 12 to 14. 
and then played semi-pro for a year and then went to uni, started broadcast journalism. But at that stage, I'd done like work experience at the Independent. So for instance, I at 16 was asking Jose Mourinho questions in the conferences at Cobham and then knew always this is, this is what I was going to do. Sport was always my thing. But then when I went to uni, music took over and I became like a, I had a radio show and I won a couple of awards and had massive interviews on there. And it was like, all right, I'm going to be the next Charlie Sloth, basically. <laughs> Not in, in terms of how he, uh, and to be fair, I, I have based a lot of my work ethic around him because he's an incredibly yeah. hard working person. He's achieved so much from where he's come from in Camden Town, which is where I was born. Um, so I wanted to be a radio DJ, did work experience with Charlie on one extra, I interviewed him loads of times. And then I guess, so I came out of uni and I was working in call centers, painting jobs, everything I could do, chair factories. Yeah, yeah. I've done like sales jobs, suit and tie yeah. in the city, all that stuff, pubs, all that shit. And then I got to 21. I remember I was late for my sales job and I'd always ask my boss if I could leave a bit earlier to get to my radio show in, in West London on West Side FM, which was a hip hop station. Uh, and he said, no, Alex, you're a salesman. You can't leave early because you're a salesman. That's what you're good at and that's what you do. And it was like, you know, when someone slaps you in the face in your head and you go, well, that's that's a big red flag to get out of this job yeah. and actually go for it a bit more. And then I moved to this agency called Disrupt and they did music management and content influencer stuff. This was 2017. And then I happened to meet um, the head of Brian Daly at the time, which was the biggest urban platform in terms of music in the, in the country. And she really liked me. We had a few drinks and that. And then she said, think of a football show idea. Uh, and I yeah. came up with this show called Posting In. Um, young Philly, Chunks, like all these big guys were on it. Dappy, music, football crossover, because you know I love my fashion yeah. as well. So yeah. it was sponsored by Boohoo Man. And then I'd say that was my first kind of like... Oh, oh, you're from that kid from Posting In. I saw you with Young Philly and Chunk. Yeah. That's why I started to get noticed a little bit. But then started, uh, I've done stuff for three, um, Sky Sports, BT yeah, Sports, no, three, BT, it, all that it, stuff. It's, it has, it's kicked on. I'd say when the Cop TV started in January the 4th, 2020, so how that started was I quit my job because again, I had a bad day at work and I was 25 and I went, I've got to leave this job and really go for it. So I was getting paid bits and bobs, but I wanted to really make this my full career. Um, and then two days after that, as if by magic, I got a phone call from Robbie saying, I want to start a Liverpool channel up. Think of a name. We'll go, we'll go partners on it. So I remember sitting in the living room. And again, when I told my mum I'd left my stable job, which I just yeah. got a pay rise in, to fuck that off and do do this Liverpool stuff because my mum was said when I was a kid why do you remember who scored and what minute for Liverpool but you don't know about maths or science because you keep failing them but I was good at English languages and like sport yeah and um so then basically my mum's like why have you left this job and I was like don't worry man something will come up I know it will got that call I remember being in the room with her and I said what should I call this channel and my mum used to work on the cop so she's from Scotland Road in Liverpool and she used to work, Jimmy Case, remember Jimmy Case? Yeah. Jimmy Case got my mum a job selling programs and food in the canteen in, in the cop. Yeah. So she used to sell all that before the game, run up to the, the gangway and watch the game. And I remember, oh, what's, what should I call it? And I had this name, Red or Dead TV. I thought, nah, it doesn't roll off the tongue. She went, what about the cop TV? And I went, oh my God, I think you've done it, mum. Yeah. And I went online, I was like, no one else has got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. and just boxed it off from there and then. And then basically lockdown happened, COVID happened. Yeah. So we were doing, you know, home and away games, European stuff. It was basically the AFTV model where yeah. it was fan cams everywhere the team went, we went. And then lockdown happened. And I remember being at the Atletico game at Anfield thinking, shit, this could be a long time until we see football yeah. again, let alone full stadium. And then you're trying to fill content. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and just as we started to horrendous. take off, that happened. Yeah. And then it's, you know, I, uh, that's when I met people like yourself. And I remember Terry Fleurs was the first one that got me on one of his online shows. Um, I did loads of stuff like that. And then came out of lockdown and I went on DR Sports a lot, which yeah. was, is the sister channel of AFTV, I yeah. guess, but the channel that covers a lot more sports and is very varied in terms of, we've had hundreds of people on DR Sports. Yeah. And then what happened was I, as we were speaking about earlier, 
was like, right, I'm going to move to Liverpool and make the Cop TV what it should be. Then when I did that, Robbie was like, well, actually, I want you to present full time on VR Sports back in London. Yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you're still able to walk on both. Like, I'm sure, and I'm lucky because my mum still lives there and I can just pop in and out. But the point was, my life kind of changed then because then it was like, well, I can, I still need to build the Cop TV up here and that's my baby and I'll never leave that. Yeah. But I've got to keep the boss happy um, and be there for as much time yeah. as I can be in London. Yeah. So it's, it's a juggling act, but with, the rise of Ruby, James Redmond, Mario, Jack the cameraman, Jacob who does the podcast with us in the studio in Liverpool. I can kind of be away that I was in Amsterdam or I was yeah, in, got in step New York and, do and, they, and they step yeah. up and do it for me. Same with like me. You've yeah. got with I've, Chris I've, and Sean. Yeah, and I've gone away this weekend and, and set the and shows that. up for the lads and yeah. they, they all just say, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this and I leave them to it. And, and it's a good feeling it. because I, at one time it was just me and Jack yeah. that we could rely on. Yeah me and him putting in the work yeah and you feel down rain outside Anfield yeah and I suppose that leads me to the my last question for you right and I've asked everyone this yep everyone wants progression everyone wants to get better everyone wants to you know be bigger better whatever it might be but and I've asked everyone this and I'm gonna, I think you're going to answer the same as what everyone else has how much does enjoyment matter oh, to make bro. it bigger because I'm of the opinion and I'm probably repeating myself for the fourth time at this weekend I'm of the opinion that if you enjoy it, it will get bigger. Of course. I'm if you don't enjoy it, you can still go on every day of the week and you're not enjoying it. But the enjoyment is a huge push to make it, it's everything. Make it better. It's everything for me. I was actually, again, it's funny you asked me that. I was talking to um, someone about this the other day. And I, I know, and I trust within myself because I know myself so well at this stage that I know that because I love it so much, I know I've got a job for life. Mm. Yeah. I love it like you wouldn't believe I'm obsessed with it. So not not to an overly unhealthy part. Yeah. Big shout out to Mario, by the way. I had to convince him to buy his girlfriend a different birthday present than something off the LFC club shop. Yeah. That's just because he loves Liverpool so much. Yeah. I'm like, have you ever asked what she wants, though? <laughs> yeah. She might want some jewellery, Mario. She doesn't, even, doesn't even like she football, doesn't want to, you'll never walk alone robe for the seventh. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So... But that's because he loves it so yeah. much and he thinks everyone should everyone love, it. love it. He yeah. moved from Italy with her, brought her yeah. to Liverpool. He's got, got a Scouse kid now. He's, he's an amazing guy. But I think my relationship with... And because, I, like I said, I've got the music aspect and I've got the fashion stuff, I feel like, whatever you want to call it, the casual scene, there's a really good exhibition at the Walker <laughs> Gallery you should go and see at the yeah. minute called The Art of the Terraces. Yeah, I've seen, you I've time, I've seen your post go. about it, yeah. You've got to go, bro. Yeah. It's open till March, but you should go today if you get the chance. So whatever you want to call it, because that is football or sport, music and fashion. I love that. And I know within that culture, I know I've got a job for life yeah. because I love it. Yeah. I enjoy it. And I've done it for free. People yeah. say, oh, it's all about the money. But I, I've done it for free. I've already yeah. done that free bit. Yeah. Now I need to get paid for it all as well, which yeah. is the beautiful thing. Because Well, I think it's only fair if you look, as I said, the way I do things, I do, I do this channel for the love of the channel, the love of Liverpool, the love of talking to people. And yeah, you make some money out of it. But yeah. what I make, honestly, I could I could claim I could claim like uh from the government more money yeah. than I'm earning, you know the sort of way. But I think when I when I do look at it myself, I look and say to myself, Well if I am still enjoying this, my wife always asks me, Are you still enjoying it? Now this I'm doing this three years on my own. And you know, the the channel's a lot older than that, but I'm doing it on my own, running this three years. And my wife does ask me every probably two or three months, he's still enjoying it. It's good that because, she asks you that, though. Yeah, but, but you see, the thing, the reason she asks is, I think, is because I never kind of go to go, oh, this and that. I never kind of speak about it. I just go and get it done. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like my release from family life, yeah. if you get me. But it's, it's still a job at the same time. Um, so if it's a weird, like, fine line, isn't it, between... Because everyone needs money. Like, let's not let's not try and lie. We all need yeah. money. We all want to achieve great things and and get bigger and better, as you said. But at the same time, that fine line just if it tips this side to right, you're facing money now. Yeah. Then the enjoyment bit tips down. Yeah. But if you kind of forget about this bit and just do that bit, yeah. the enjoyment. Well, I find I find that I find that the enjoyment stays up. I think if, if you're looking at something like this and there's your enjoyment yeah. here at its peak or in around that, I think. Uh, the earnings or, or, or popularity or whatever it might be will go up 
once the oh, enjoyment stays up. 100%. No, because... And consistency. If yeah, consistency. Well, we're, look, love it and it's good. Well, that's the thing. You've got like, a job for life, guys. Well, that's the thing. Football's going nowhere. Oh, no, yeah. And the thing is, for me, you know, we are consistent on what we do. We put out shows nearly every day of the week. Um, that, that shows people like, people know, and stuff like that. But I know I might throw a show out next season and it'll be just bang. It goes down like a lead balloon. No one likes it. And you kind of get that vibe very quickly and you go, just kind of have to pull that. That's not a reflection yeah. of the people that are on it, but it's just not working, yeah. you know? Because somebody somebody might like your stuff and, and see me on your channel and come over and look at my stuff and go, oh, I really like that, but that new one, that new one, I don't like. Because people like different things. We're in what they're watching anyway. They, they might like you and me, but they might like, might not like one show you do. Yeah. Or might not like one show. Yeah. No one's going to like everything. No. If everyone liked everything, we'd be laughing. Yeah. It would um, be a boring world. But yeah. Yeah, again, like, because I've had all these jobs, like all those jobs I was telling you about, and this proves my point, I got fired from all of them mm. through can't be asked to turn up yeah. today, go and do a shit job. I don't care if I get sacked, I'll just get a new job on Monday. That was always my attitude. Yeah. But I've never been sick, phoned up sick, been late for anything to do with Football. TV, DR Sports, Sky Sports, because I love it. Yeah. And it goes back to your point, like how important is the enjoyment? If I didn't love all them things, then it would be oh, yeah, no. Go on, then. Can you pay it early? Because I just want to get this done. No, I'm turning up because I love it. Yeah. And I hope the hope that enjoyment stays there forever. Well, I think yeah. I think it's a massive key. If the enjoy if the enjoyment stays, things will only get bigger and better, in my opinion, because your enthusiasm stays. Your enthusiasm to go and push yourself or try something different. You know, yeah. try something out there that that could blow up and, and work. I think it absolutely works. But look, kept it for long enough. I'm oh, gonna go and play right, some golf. Right, you know what? I could chat about this stuff all day because it's good to speak with someone who's like-minded and we've got a lot in common obviously so long may it continue the lfc day trip as the cop tv we just got to keep going it's yeah. tough sometimes watching it the is. team at the minute Fuck, but you better believe it if we can't be there in these moments then we don't deserve to be yeah. celebrating look, in the parades as know? i always say the, these periods we're not used to them on the young club let's be honest but we're still there or thereabouts. Won a game yesterday. And we don't know how good we had it, Gav. Well, I think people no, like we, me we, and you know, but... Yeah, but I, I even, I even said this a couple of weeks ago. I think it's hard to appreciate at the time because you're caught up in the moment yeah. where <clears throat> you just crave more. And when you yeah. go through these bad periods, I said it the other week, when you go through these bad periods, it actually you, you actually do question yourself and say, did I appreciate that? Mm. And I kind of remember these moments more because the next time, which will come very soon, where Liverpool are flying 10 game run, 15 game run, unbeaten or 15 in a row wins or whatever it might be, I'll think back to September, October and go, but make sure you appreciate this today because yeah. you remember it was like two months ago. But, 100%, but that's what football does to you. It's ups and downs. It's been a lot of ups. It's a little bit of a down at the minute. But look, I'm going to leave it there. Um, it's been a brilliant chat. Best of luck with the Cop TV, Thank you, DR Sports, everything else you're doing because um, you're doing a fabulous job. It's just a shame um, I'm going to Qatar on Thursday, yeah. DR Sports for two and a half weeks, which is amazing work opportunity. Not that I agree with what's, why it was awarded to Qatar, but it's a shame Ireland didn't qualify for the World Cup, man. Yeah, but that's, the, that's who I would have been to put uh, Yeah, but they're, they're poor at the minute. I'm going to take my Ireland kit out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my Opal 94. Yeah. My white Opal Rep, Represent, yeah. yeah. Well, look, Alex, it's been an absolute pleasure. Let's go and hit some golf balls and see how bad we really are at golf. Cheers, mate. Top man. Thank Cheers. You.